get it. So she says she's in the second line. Walk to the right. So much so nobody think I walk over there to the right. They can be right after this game. Yeah, she got sunglasses on. There, she's sitting in the fourth row.
I know, I seen, I seen. Huh? You say? Your mom right here. <laughs> Your dad right there. Hold on. Mr. Paul. Yeah, they, they should be here. My mom, because when I called them, they said they were like 20 minutes away, but they don't got to sit next to us. All right. Bye, love you too. Bye, love you too. No, they don't, they don't, they do it. You gotta scan a QR code. That's how you check in. So like when you scan a QR code, your name comes up. And you gotta check in and then basically they call you. They call you and buy the order to check in? Yeah. So is it gonna be good? No, like they, they don't give you it. They give you a paper. So like first come first service. So say she scans hers last, she be called last. Good to buy yourself. Huh? Good to buy yourself. Good to buy Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome graduates, families, friends, and colleagues. My name is Bill Farquhar and I have the distinct pleasure to serve as the Dean of the College of Health Sciences. We are excited to be here this evening to celebrate the class of 2023. On behalf of the college, I would like to offer our warm congratulations to the students graduating here today on your great achievement. Congratulations as well to the family, friends, loved ones, faculty, staff, all of you who have had a part in making today happen. As we get started, please join me in a moment of silence to remember those loved ones who are not with us today. We would also like to recognize all members of the U.S. military, active, reserve, and retired, who are graduating today, as well as those who are faculty, staff, and guests. Please stand to be recognized and remain standing.
Today is a special day for all of you, our graduates, as well as your loved ones, whether they are here to support you or cheering you on from afar. You have put yourself on a path to serve society and causes greater than yourselves, causes that will inevitably improve the health and well-being of the communities where you will live and work. Your selflessness and drive to care for others is worth celebrating, and all of us in the College of Health Sciences feel honored to play a role in helping you get to this point. It's why the faculty and staff are filled with such pride and joy today, and why we'll continue rooting for you as you take the next step in your life journey. The late scientist and author Stephen Jay Gould wrote, the center of human nature is rooted in 10,000 ordinary acts of kindness that define our days. I ask you, our graduates, how will you define your days? And what daily acts of kindness will you perform moving forward? It is clear to all of us that you're off to a great start. But it's only a start. A career, or better yet, a life, is a long journey requiring thousands of ordinary decisions. I'm hopeful that your time here at UD has equipped you to make good decisions. So move forward with confidence, move forward with humility. Accept that you will make mistakes in work and life. As I joke with my sons, if you're not making any mistakes, you're not trying hard enough. But quickly forgive yourself. This is difficult but necessary. The challenge is being honest with yourself and making the necessary corrections to move forward. Your ability to do this may determine your career trajectory. You have chosen careers in health, health care, and science. Strive to be leaders, and as leaders, reject the easy cynicism and lazy headline-grabbing pessimism that permeates our discourse. We need your curiosity, optimism, and hope to move society forward. Also, be collaborative and open to new ideas. Read a lot, build your cognitive endurance, and keep working hard. Success will follow. Be sure to also find the right balance between work, play, and family so you can continue to find joy in the service of others. Society needs you, we need you, to be at your best. A special thanks to the family and friends attending this ceremony. I'm sure your presence here today is very meaningful to the graduates. Thank you for being here. Lastly, to our graduates, remember to find your days with kindness. And on behalf of the faculty and staff, a sincere and heartfelt congratulations. It is now my honor to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Carol Rattay. Dr. Rattay is the Director for the Division of Human Development and Disability at the CDC. Prior to that, she served for 13 years as Delaware's Director of the Division of Public Health. Dr. Rattay has served at all levels of the government, including in the Health and Human Services Office of the Office of Public Health and Science, where she worked with the Assistant Secretary of Health and the Surgeon General. Dr. Rattay is a recognized public health leader who has repeatedly demonstrated her ability to translate science into policy and programs for the public and improve the lives of the people she serves. We're excited to have her as our convocation speaker. Please join me in a warm welcome for Dr. Rattay. Thank you, Dr. Farquhar. Hello, class of 2023. Congratulations on reaching this incredible milestone. I know you've worked hard and sacrificed much, and you have endured a bit of crazy, especially during the peak of the pandemic. I recognize that your academic journey has been a different experience than your predecessors. But in many ways, there is no better time for you to advance in the world of health. And I am so excited for you. You may be clear about the next few steps of your journey, or you may not, and either is okay. So my first key point by obtaining a degree in the fields of health sciences, you are opening many doors. Your path from now going forward may not be straight. There are so many different directions you can explore. Direct 
healthcare service delivery, government at all levels, international work, or grassroots community engagement, vaccine development, research, academia, working in health systems, or in corporate America. The options are endless. You may not know what you want to do with your degree, but you are in the fortunate position of being able to have a career that can evolve over time. So you might want to get comfortable with not having all the answers about your future right now. So little story about me. When I was in eighth grade, I decided I was going to become a pediatrician and I set down that path of achieving the goal with blinders on. And after getting my medical degree in 92, I completed my pediatric residency in, at Georgetown and then I was in private pediatric practice for five years. And while I loved my time in pediatric practice, three years in I realized this wasn't the last stop for me. I saw many diseases and conditions that were preventable and children and youth whose unhealthy lifestyles were setting them up for a lifetime of health challenges. I needed and wanted something different or more for my career. However, I was quite critical of myself for not being satisfied with being a partner in a great pediatric practice. But when a friend introduced me to the field of public health and preventive medicine, I knew that was my path. So the next open door led me to the University of Maryland, where I earned a master's in epidemiology and completed a preventive medicine residency. And I felt like a kid in a candy shop. I had finally found my passion. I got to work in Washington, D.C. at the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, in Atlanta at CDC, and at the Maryland Department of Health during these training years. And during a practicum training time at the HHS Office of Health Promotion and Disease Pre Prevention, I met Dr. Woody Kessel, who's a former Assistant Surgeon General, and Dalton Paxman, who's now a leader in HHS. And this experience led me directly to the job in that same office after I graduated. And then when my family relocated to Delaware in 2004, it was Woody and Dalton who led me to my next job at Delaware's largest child health organization, Nemours. I remain close to Woody and Dalton today, and I'm so grateful that our paths crossed years ago. So the point I wanna make with this is it's really important to grow your network, nurture and cherish the relationships that you develop along the way. So here I am five years into leading this um, childhood obesity statewide initiative here in Delaware and a colleague and friend literally knocks on my door and says, do you wanna work for the new governor, Jack Markell, as the state health official? And at this point in my life, my daughter, was 21, 20 months old, my son was four, and I told him it probably wasn't the right time for me to take a big job like that. But he somehow convinced me to meet Rita Landgraf, who the governor had chosen to be the Secretary of Health and Social Services, and who many of you know. And the rest is history. Rita became my boss for eight years, remains my great friend and public health partner today. And again, I fell in love with a new, exciting, and very challenging role. So this brings me to a second critical point. It's important to do work that matters, work that makes a difference and makes the world a better place. And I believe that this is the greatest gift that working in the health field gives to us. During my time at Delaware's Division of Public Health, my team and I worked with many partners throughout our state and have seen exciting improvements in health through comprehensive collective efforts. We've seen a reduction in infant mortality, a reduction in cancer mortality, work that matters. I had the privilege of being part of standing up a, an initiative we call Delaware CAN, which was a public health approach to increase access to contraception and with partners, unintended pregnancy rates decreased by 25% in our state. And that work matters more than many people realize. 
With the science pointing us to place-based and community-driven initiatives to address our significant health inequities, I'm most proud of our Healthy Communities Delaware Initiative, which is a collaborative co-led between the state of Delaware, the University of Delaware, and the Delaware Community Foundation. And it's a place-based, authentic partnership with communities in the lead to direct their, to address their most important social determinants of health. And the motto of that initiative is align and invest for impact. And with these aligned efforts and in investments, we're seeing exciting results in the communities with the greatest needs. To me, that's work that really matters. So while I, I don't really wanna talk about COVID, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the trauma that people who worked in the healthcare and public health sectors experienced during the pandemic. For the first two exhausting years, we had to remain calm, professional, and grounded in the science as we attempted to pe keep people safe and alive. Most of us in health have been repeatedly harassed, even physically threatened, by those who don't agree with vaccines, masks, or science-based treatments. And my guess is many of you ha had that experience as students. What kept us going was that we were doing work that mattered, work that made a difference. My team at the Division of Public Health cared deeply about serving Delawareans and remained driven by the mission to protect and promote the health of all people in Delaware. Third key point is about staying true to your values at all times. So most of us have hobbies. Uh, something I love to do is, is running. And I've um, developed some really close relationships with colleagues through running. Early in my tenure as the state health official for Delaware, I was running with a new colleague and mentor named Dr. Paul Jarris. He was um, a leader in state public health and, and formerly a public health official for Vermont. And he told me I would be pushed at times to do things or say things that are inconsistent with what I believe and value. And he adamantly advised me to resist ever acting in a way that's inconsistent with my values or to depart from what I believe is right. I'd like to pass that same advice on to all of you. Know your values and, and stay true to them. If you've not done so, make sure you take some time to discover your personal values. There's some apps for that, just in case you're wondering. Your values define what a meaningful life looks like to you. Your values are the justification for who you are at your deepest, most personal level. And knowing and articulating your values helps you to wake up with a sense of purpose and carries you throughout the day no matter what hiccups or stressors arise. When difficult situations or ethical dilemmas arise, and they will, your core values can guide you in your decision making. Your core values can give you clarity during chaotic and confusing times. They lead you to make wise decisions that set you up for success in the long term. So Paul's advice became relevant within my first year as the state health official. I was horrified to see a budget recommended by the governor that cut out all of our dollars for tobacco, physical activity, nutrition, and obesity prevention. More, more than three dollars, or th sorry, three million dollars were just completely eliminated from our budget. And part of my job is to defend the governor's budget but I knew I could not publicly support the elimination of our tobacco funding. So after losing sleep over it, I had a courageous conversation with my new boss and cabinet secretary, Rita, and she checked into it and she found out that the funding had inadvertently been left off as a, a budget line item. So it wasn't intentional. And fortunately, some of those dollars were restored. I was so glad I spoke up and so relieved about the outcome. So when Governor Carney became governor in 2017, his key message to his staff was, and still is, do the right thing. It was so incredibly reassuring to me to know these strong moral values were the priority from the top down. 
So remember this when you find yourself in leadership positions. And staying true to your values doesn't mean you always get your way. Be sure to remain open and listen to the many different perspectives among your colleagues, partners, and the people you serve. Proactively interacting with others, acknowledging their viewpoints, and building consensus are value traits and key for progress. However, if you feel you are in a role where you are being pushed to compromise your values, speak up, push back, and resist, but at the end of the day, don't be afraid to move on. Remember that you have the gift of being a health professional. Use your gift in ways that bring you satisfaction, meaning and joy, and allow you to be true to yourself. My final and brief point is about accepting, managing, and helping to drive change. Medicine has changed so much since I graduated from medical school. Change can be very difficult, but it is inevitable. And the fact is, our health system is clearly not what it needs to be. We invest far too much on treatment, not enough on prevention. We have poor health outcomes and horrible inequities so that not everyone has opportunities for good health. And we have the most expensive healthcare system in the world. Reforming our healthcare system is necessary. If you want changes to occur that are in the best interest of those we serve, be part of the change, get involved. For me, being part of change can be scary, but also exhilarating. So when I took on that role as Delaware's state health official, I suddenly found myself leading a division of over 900 employees and a budget over $200 million, a division with many internal challenges not to mention the poor health status of many Delawareans. I knew it was a big leap, and I was a bit intimidated. But I followed my heart and trusted my instincts, and I'm so glad that I did. Serving in that role has been the greatest honor of my lifetime, and embracing the mission to protect and promote the health of all Delawareans was, was what I was meant to do for 13 years. But now today I'm really thrilled to be working at the CDC as the director for the Division of Human Development and Disabilities. In my heart, I know where I'm where I belong at this point in my career. But this job was not even on my radar 15 months ago. Personal changes can be very stressful, but exciting if we embrace them. Shortly after I started at CDC last winter, my 18-year-old son who will soon be starting his journey as a blue hen, ask how my new job was going. I told him I loved my job, but also that I felt stupid some of the time. I had a lot to learn, and I needed to remind myself it is okay to feel uncomfortable, and it's okay to make mistakes along the way. Engaging in the learning process is exciting, and it's how we solve problems and make breakthroughs. A quote by Roy Bennett, comes to mind where he says, the one who falls and gets up is stronger than the one who never tried. Do not fear failure, but rather fear of not trying. There has never been a better time to work in the health sector. Embrace your opportunities to improve the lives of people and the places that are burdened by disease and social ills. Those of us in the health sector make a difference all day, every day. Allow your career to take you in different and sometimes unplanned and unexpected directions. Make sure you're doing work that you find meaningful and that makes you feel like you're making a difference. Know your values, stay true to them, and accept that change will happen and be a part of it. It's so exciting to be a part of the health family. Our world will benefit greatly from your contributions. Good luck and congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Rattay. That was excellent. Um, now, for the most awaited and important part, it is time to recognize our graduates. I would like to invite... I don't like the team, but I don't really like the team.
I would like to invite our marshals to escort our first group of students to the platform to be recognized. As each group of students lines up, their department chairs will share some brief remarks. First up is Dr. Jillian Travolsi. Good afternoon. My name is Jillian Travolsi and I'm the chair of the Department of Behavioral Health and Nutrition. It is a pleasure to be here today as we recognize and celebrate our graduates. For faculty and staff, this is our favorite day of the year. To the parents, family, and friends, every one of you has made an impact on the graduates that sit before us. Parents, we've had the pleasure of working with your student and recognize that your time and your sacrifice were instrumental in making this day possible. Graduates, please join us in applause as a tribute to the love and support of your parents, family, and friends. students graduating with a bachelor's degree in health behavior science, nutrition, nutrition and medical sciences, or dietetics. At the graduate level, we celebrate students who have earned a master's or doctoral degree in health promotion, dietetics, and nutrition, human nutrition, health behavior science, or nutrition sciences. This is an accomplished group of graduates whose learning occurred both inside and outside of the classroom. In addition to rigorous coursework, many of our students engaged in research, published papers, presented at conferences, practiced clinical skills in our nutrition and health coaching clinics, and engaged in community outreach programs to advance the health and well-being of others. These graduates have impressive plans after graduation. Some will start employment with organizations such as St. Francis Healthcare, PepsiCo, and the University of New Hampshire. Others have been accepted to medical school, pharmacy school, and into physician assistant, occupational therapy, and public health graduate programs. Some have been accepted to dietetic internships or PhD programs at places such as UNC Chapel Hill, Purdue, Tulane, and Tufts. And we have two students headed to the National Institutes of Health for a post-baccalaureate research internship. Indeed, this is an impressive group of graduates. So as we celebrate our graduates' tremendous achievements, let us draw inspiration from the words and author of poet Maya Angelou. Her wisdom and insight may offer guidance as you embark on the next phase of your life journey. Maya Angelou wrote, you may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. In your professional career, you will undoubtedly face challenges, setbacks, and moments of uncertainty. Embrace the defeats as opportunities for growth, Learn from them and let them fuel your determination to overcome any challenge. Maya Angelou also said, when you know better, you do better. The field of health science is constantly evolving with new research and technologies. Embrace continuous learning, stay curious, seek knowledge, and remain open to new ideas and advancements that you can apply to your profession. Lastly, Maya Angelou also said, I've learned that you should not go through life with a catcher's mitt on both hands. You need to be able to throw something back. As health science professionals, you have the opportunity to address health disparities and challenge inequities. Use your voice and your expertise to advocate for change, not only within the healthcare system, but also in society at large. So in conclusion, graduates, as you stand on the precipice of your health science careers, let the words of Maya Angelou guide you. Persevere in the face of challenges, commit to lifelong learning, and be a catalyst for equity in your profession and the world. Congratulations, graduates, and best wish for a successful and impactful journey ahead. Nicole Boylan. Zoe Lane Harper. Yes, Zoe. All right. Melanie Rojas. <laughs> Hannah Rader. <laughs> Holly Delagrange. <laughs> Abigail Molly. 
Lauren Nauman. Claire Kumar. Amy Victoria Nichols. Catherine Howland. Rachel Sampson. Maria Despina Taplin. Jordan Carter. If I get famous before then, no. Because then I'm going to be good for the rest of my life. Connor Lynch. If I don't get famous before then. You're not doing, you still didn't do your music. You sent it to me. Spencer I feel bad, so I know. Don't beat me up for that. That's why he brought me into your life. Destiny Angel. That, I do think that is. That's, I, I really believe that. I think that's why you're here as well. And you're not listening to me. I am Ruth nervous. A. I'm nervous. I don't know how to do it. I'm nervous. It's a lot of pressure. Lucy Elizabeth McLaughlin. So then what happens when they call you back and like, hey, that, that is the boy you sent. Addison you want to come in Porter and actually put audition. Oh, so then what, but then I'm going to be nervous. I'm going to be like, oh my gosh. That means y'all going to have to come fly out there with me. Peyton Ann Lord. You didn't bring it? What's that? Is that the camera that was in the bag? Victoria Shader. Oh, that's you. They barely let me bring this camera. I know. Yeah, they were like, oh, they barely let you bring that in? Would they give you a hard time about that bag? Julia They checked it. They made sure I didn't have any weapons. Shioma and Joku. Rebecca Metellus. You're fine. I think I got the right the second one. Yeah, that's the second one. And Guzzi and Piyama. See, I'm glad I can see. Taylor Trace Adler. Genesis Gabriella Torres. Samuel Elijah Levitt. Amelia Shenandoah Cope. Teresa Marie Miller. Daniel Robert Hemsworth. Anna Lyons. Isadora Azedi Nunes. Adrian Overbeck Strickland. Huh? Yeah, I tried to be second. Everybody's feeling it up. Karen Ueda. Sierra Sophia Johnson. Jada Kilgore. Jabeth Mayo. Grace Elizabeth Inman. Nicole Grace Bozetka. Samantha Jane Frank. Cameron Ann Fidelli. Madison Killen. 
Natalie Irene Vassilatos. Grace A. Vajara. Erin Marie News. Juliana Benito. Maria Ann Byer. Samantha Marianne Bisho. Jacqueline Ehrlich. Emma Archer. Susan Esther Cisse. Jamie Ray Gohart. Elizabeth Donovan. Alyssa C. Henderson. Charlotte Salafia. Nara Anderson. Lauren Croft. Maya Nicole De La Torre. Shirley Chen. Chloe I. Rogers. Marissa E. Brown. Samantha Basilicata. Aaron Elizabeth Jeffrey. Ruben Lara. Emily Margaret Brown. Tony Faith Appy. <laughs> Emily Elizabeth Haver. Madeline Siskowski. Oh, you can go to the 
Francesca Barone. Eliza Ascarova. Z told him. Z said she's leaving after she gets her diploma. So she grabbed him. Yeah, we walk. Brianna Francesca McConnell. Madison Lee Gerald. Grace Elizabeth Sterling. Sierra Mackenzie Michalski. What do you all do on Monday? Kyla Sadie. Because I might have a surprise thing at my house. Tracy Ortiz Reyes. I don't know. My, my cousin, she's doing the decorations, but she said Nasir she wanted to go night with time. Oh, so you, you I'm throwing cousin? it. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Me and my cousin are throwing it, but. Danielle Kimbrough. Working on a house. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I'll, 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 nah, it's no pressure. Wherever time. Sebastian Kimbrough. Okay. Beth Haswar. Haley Grace Pett. Ask me where she's going. Which way do we need to meet her? That's why I asked Willow McAndrew. Jaden Kirkins. No, she's texting me. She's asking. She just asked me where to walk. I told people to walk a straight back. So I don't know if we go back there. Or... Carly Haddock. She's leaving right after she did her thing. Yeah. Giovanna Marie Polisi. Because she got reservations for Muhammad Reeves at 6.30. Or 6, I think. 6 or 6.30. It's only 4.45. Yeah. Lillian Presley. Madison Lee. They gotta go back. My sister just got a, she broke, her car broke down. Oh, okay. So what they're doing she is they drop her off and they came here, but then they gotta go back because she just got a new car. So they gotta go over there, situate all that. Jailer Lynn Marto. Carlos Alfredo Perez. Jacqueline Bear. Taylor Johnson. Grace Elizabeth Sterling. Beth Haswark. Sarah Page Lyons. Megan Victoria Streisgood. Janesha Q. Handy. <laughs> Kevin Joseph Corcoran. <laughs> Fabian Hildalga. Ryan D. Kerner. Ryan Grisella. <laughs> Valerie Ann Simmons. Brooke Noel Hollingsworth. Jenna Nicole Beer. You're welcome. I told her your mom. I said, text to the test. I want to Peyton James Lasorza. In which way, what? Rachel Horowitz. She said to meet her at the... Samuel H. DeWar. 
meet up by the big blue hen sign outside of the stadium. Caroline oh, Grace okay, Quaid. I know, no, that is. Okay. So she needs to Colleen Marie Crawford. Ryan Matthew Bond. That's my right there. Yes, it is. Anna Mae Best out. Kathleen Emily Palacio. Emily Vandermoren. Jada Simone Ballard. Does he ever know anything about the surprise? Mm-hmm. Emma Rose Julian. Yeah, yeah. It's better that way because she's kind of a good one yeah, that's why I said it's like it's gonna be. I'm gonna get her like a May cake just to like celebrate her big comp like her little Zip accomplishment. Boy, and then the y'all party will be like the big big party. So she don't know. I'm gonna just tell her. Ashley like, and Thomas. I'm gonna play it off. Like I'm probably gonna take her out for the day. Like let her Delaine get lunch. Marie Moore. And then all that. And then um have y'all at the house. And then I'll text y'all. I'll text Steven you. Joseph and then um when I text you, just let everybody at the house know yeah, she's on the way. Remember your graduation. Colleen Marie. This was indoor. And um, I graduated this Kylie year, she Brooke graduated. Ogden. I got my master's, she got her. Are you for real? Dean Hall. <laughs> Mateo Gaetan Van Damia. Lauren Salmonson. <laughs> Brett Edward Buckman. Sierra Brielle Crane. Ava Sloboda. Grace Soka. Jenna Patricia Lamont. Kayla Brooke Beerlon. Cindy Morant, Anastasia Soroka, Caitlin Elizabeth Josephowski, Ryan William Luppy, Jamie Bassey, Brianna A. Maniachi. Natalie Elise Doberkowski. Yeah. Emanuela Ferguson. Olivia Catherine Brozio. Alexis Lynn Kurtianic. William Tyler Westergaard. Amelia Lorenzo. Marissa Canacy. Harley Kimberly Aquilino. <laughs> Elizabeth Marie Robertson. Julia Bryce. Megan Fitzpatrick. Isabella Maria Kiesler. Shylan J. Benjamin Bryant. Kathy Amaris Layton. Lauren Delpo. Mercedes McCarthy. Emily Forgash. Oh, sorry. Megan Marin. Griffin Martinez. Alex 
Hey, I put that star like right across the street. You know how to get there? Despite the challenges, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pandemic, I know how to get there. We have continued to okay. provide high quality education. And where y'all park? I park in here. Which behind my mom? All while navigating the new technology and adapting to new ways of learning and working. Oh, it's over at Christian Mall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Goes beyond I still don't know. You want me to sing out a location? Speech language pathologists have the privilege of being individuals. You're going to go, go back that way, like towards campus. Whether it's through speech therapy, language intervention, or augmentative and alternative communication. You have seen the transformative power of effective communication in the lives of your clients. And I have no doubt that each of you will go on to make a profound impact on the lives of those you serve. Transformation also means continually seeking out new knowledge, new technologies, and new ways of approaching therapy. As you leave the University of Delaware and enter the workforce, I encourage you to remain committed to your own growth and development, to stay at the forefront of the field, and to never stop learning. And finally, transformation means being agents of change in the communities we serve. Effective communication is a basic human right. And I know you will work towards breaking down barriers to prevent individuals from accessing the care and support they need. You must be advocates for your clients and for the principles of diversity, equity, and inclusion that underlie your work. So to our graduates, on the behalf of the entire department, I say congratulations on your tremendous accomplishment, your transformation. You've worked hard and you should be proud of all that you've achieved. And as you move forward, remember that transformation is not a one-time event, but a continual process of growth and evolution. May you continue to transform yourself, your communities, and the world around you for many years to come. Thank you. Thank you. 
Yes, indeed. Yes. Agar Feinstein. Hunter J. Lord. Crystal Gurma Akalu. Lucille Catherine Bauer. Hannah Carney. Molly Elena Hamilton. Quinlan Hiko. Michelle Rose Yezo. Emily Elizabeth Kleinbach. Maureen Victoria Kessler. Lindsay Marin Hawtaw. Stephanie Danielle Stoller. Alyssa Ruth Walker. Megan T. O'Brien. Celestine Grace Pena Orby. Emily Grace Rulowitz. Daisy N. Martinez. Sheldon Elizabeth Harder. Because of these experiences and many, many more, 
Are ready to apply what they learned. Remember that? I, what's up to her? I don't know what she's going to do. Going forward. Yeah. Uh, I think. Remember that? She just want to stay. Racism as a public health crisis. And the long tail of the impact of the pandemic. To our graduating students, while your profiles are your own, they would not have been possible without the work of many of you. I would like to acknowledge my colleagues in the epidemiology program, our faculty and staff who dedicate themselves wholeheartedly. Please keep in touch. We all want to know what's in store for you. I truly hope you leave the University of Delaware and this program inspired about the difference you can make in the world as part of the next generation of public health professionals. She says she wants to leave. We have okay. so much to do, but for what comes next, I am certain you will all rise to the challenge. Alexander Burroughs. They have pink, pink hoodies. Yeah, people are leaving. Asia Unique Coleman. Braulio Florentino Benitez. Asli Kathanique McCullers. Sarah McPhillip. Avery Mills. Christiana Olajumoke Oyakami. Sarah Ann Wells. Good afternoon. I'm John Jacob. And I represent the entire faculty and staff of the Department of Kinesiology and Applied Physiology. And our enthusiastic congratulations to the class of 2023. You did it. You are graduating. The challenge of getting through college during the pandemic was enormous. And I want to take you to take a moment to congratulate yourself and those who supported you throughout this time on the qualities that will continue to serve you as you continue on your life journey. You, your persistence, your perseverance, in short, you have grit. We are conferring over 200 degrees today. And we are also conferring degrees in the BS in health sciences with a concentration in occupational therapy. A joint program between the University of Delaware and Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia. So what? These students have been facing nah, she's about to get up. This, this is next what I get up. At Thomas Jefferson, and after today's well deserved celebration of their bachelor's in sciences, they are headed back to TJU to complete the final year of their master's program. To all of our graduates, we are proud to have prepared you for the challenges facing healthcare in the U.S., who are now experts in what Dr. Thomas Frieden, former director of the CDC, related about exercise in 2017, and I quote, even if you don't lose an ounce, you'll live longer, feel healthier, and be less likely to get cancer, heart disease, stroke, and arthritis. It's the closest thing we have to a wonder drug. With all the knowledge you have acquired in human physiology, biomechanics, neuroscience, exercise prescription, and more, you are poised to deliver the wonder drug to our society and improve our health care. You are ready to play a critical role. After today, you face a new challenge, the next phase of your life's journey. 
And I'll just relate one more fact. There's been an ongoing study since the 1990s called The World of 100 People. In this project, scientists asked, what would the world look like if only 100 people lived in this village? The distribution of resources was revealing. In this global village of 100, 23 people had no shelter, 15 were undernourished, and 48 lived on less than two US dollars a day. It may come as no surprise that 75 of the people in this village had a cell phone. But the statistic that is most relevant to today's ceremony, out of the 100 people in the village, only seven had a college degree. So you are now one of seven in our global village. And if you're getting a graduate degree, you're less than one person in that village. You have earned a great gift, and your opportunities, because of your hard work and grit, are boundless. You have thrived during the, pandem the, during the pandemic. That's courage, that's resilience. Qualities you carry out today that are far more important than the diploma. I speak for the entire department when I wish you congratulations to the class of 2023. Ashwini Sansari. Malin Argodia. I had a hair horn too. I know that. I'm not going Jefferson Gray Scott. Jamie Angela Ogle. Jenna Michelle Lavira. <laughs> Megan Elizabeth Jones. <laughs> Pope Catherine Eckhart. <laughs> Sydney DeBlissy. Brianna Marie Costa. Samantha Barnhart. Morgan Taylor Ong. Zachary M. Hostin. Joseph Mamola. Maxon Blow. Anne F. Thomas. <laughs> Stephanie Judkins. Kyle Gabriel Soriano Ocampo. Louis Elizabeth Dahl. Marissa Lynn Mellinger. Keyshawn Patel. Paul Matthew Thompson. Alexandria Sisova. Julia May Oliveri. Camden Delaney Blevins. Sydney Aaron Bell. Jordan Martini. Beatrice Poacher. Yutao Wei. Oh! Ryan Patrick Hubler. Andrew Liss. Jake Hickey. Samantha Christine Marklin. Macy Marie Silicato. Lindsay Elizabeth Mossmiller. <laughs> Kelly Madden. Ava Wigmeyer. Jillian Fiumaro. <laughs> Brinley Marie Mummer. Oh, Brinley! Avery Rolls. 
Lauren Elizabeth Mahoney. Dylan Christopher Saracino. Catherine yeah, Marie Payton. Here. I can't see her. Nicole Caitlin Marcone. Don't forget. You got it? You got it? I got you. Griffin Morris. Justine Gordon. Jenna Beth Bruce. Joanna Lee. Caitlin Walls. Samuel Diamond. Oh, I'm not even getting Morgan <laughs> Elizabeth Jennings. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all I was like, yeah, let me look and see if I got it. Morgan Nicole Johnson. Jacqueline Stalega. Donna Marie Carino. Amanda Margaret Gosswiler. Sydney Shea Kerr. <laughs> what happened? Gabrielle Ann Hudson. <laughs> Danielle Anna Padillo. <laughs> Kendall <laughs> Simone <laughs> Gerard. She, gets, she has to scan her name. Elizabeth M. Enright. Erin Colleen Roach. No, she got to get back in line. She's not going right now. Catherine Rathman. Is she? Meredith Krieger. Is she back in line? Megan Ruff. Stop playing, Madison Hall. Christina Rose O'Halloran. Brianna Shay Martinez. That wave ain't strong like it. Rhea Chudamani Morthy. Taylor Ann Evans. Megan Lee Berkey. Okay, you got it, Karen? Erica Marin Brown. Adam Bungarts. Cameron Lombardi. Julia Ann Chappelle. John Thomas Renz Jr. Ryan O'Neill. Jalen Shay McKay. Did you guys get it? Tristan, how you got me too? Huh? You need to get it. Darren oh, Jacob to share. Take some pictures. Because I'm doing this uh, professional. David M. Layden. Zelina Leonella Marissa Harris. <laughs> Chatterjee. Yeah. <laughs> McKenna Dixon. You got it, Darius? Yeah, I got it. Mary Catherine Lachlan. Andrew David Longa. <laughs> Matthew Lewis Blue. Okay, okay, okay. Let me get my daughter. Did she sit down? Jeffrey Thomas Roberts. Adrian Joey Valencia Balto. Where did he go? Alexi Grace Gray. Christina Marie Denisio. Sydney Rubin. Amita Chatterjee. 
Erin Patricia Desmond. <laughs> Hannah Elizabeth Corrigan. Grace Fallon Bittner. In Davion Burris. Giuseppe Conti. Joseph Andrew Stefanik. Sarah Black. Lauren Leader. Elizabeth Sabo. Gregory Gerald Solo. Timothy Joseph Salvina. Ryan Vincent Panzavacchia. I got it. Vincent Joseph Lucchese. Dorothy Nicole Dover. Rachel Susanna Castle. Brianna Nicole Swan. Zachariah Butler. Nicole Mary Lippert. Ava Meekin. Yeah, good picture. Good picture. Reese J. Brusini. Isabella Joy McKenna. Yeah. Michelle Ojo. Angelique Camille Lorang. Aaron Lillis. Raina Tomlin. Jason Sider. Kevin Matthew Lynch. Jenna Maleko. Zachary J. Casey. Cassidy Linda Press. Jenna Asylum. Madison Page. Caitlin Carrick. Shannon Lockeren. Jamie Morin. Janine Akili D'Souza. Benjamin Cody Patterson. Thank you. Sorry, Sydney Arsenal. <laughs> Brianna Leocadia Nastro. Jenna Hope Rafferty. Gianna Hanna. <laughs> Michelle Bertram. Elena Water. Rebecca Lauren Yentis. Tegan Lee Hedman. Madison Rose Chesney. Megan King.
IUD. We're gonna have another second graduate here at UD. So happy for her. Oh, there they are. It's 
See, and I caught up with you guys. Randall, where'd you park? That way? Uh, you know where to go, right? Yeah. Oh, it's Lene, Lene. Thank you. You too, thanks. <laughs> They're so nice here. University of Denver. She's in the car because Lay's with her mom, right? Yeah. <sighs> uh, that was fun. Oh, I'm glad I didn't lose it. Oh, okay, but something. Where's Pam? Right here. Mm -hmm. Oh. That thing didn't work for me. Alright. I'm gonna go to Bahamas. That's UD. It's a wrap. Thanks for watching.